Hi, I'm William, and today we have a special treat for you agriculture guys. Holy smokes, it's a Massey. It's an old Massey. Massey Ferguson tractor. This one's black, so it's telling me it's rich. So it could be carburation. This is my key switch, okay? That's all we're doing. Welcome to Service Call, a mechanics guide to service, troubleshooting, and repair. This is what's good about having a brother as a mechanic, is you can borrow tools from him and you don't have to spend all the money uh, investing in all these tools. So I borrowed this from him. This is a compressor tester and uh, we check engine compressions with it. Basically what we do is you have different uh, fittings here. This is a really old one because uh, it's been around, I'm just, just going to say it's been around in the family for for years, uh, even though it's his. We've used it for so many times, um, so many projects that we worked on, cars. And basically all we did is, if, if you remember the spark plug that we took out, we just find the, the, the same type of uh, spark plug thread, right? In this case, it's this one, okay? And we stick it in the hole and we crank it over, okay? You'll notice that it comes with a gauge as well, and that gauge it just comes with a quick coupler, put it in there. You crank it over five times and you check your pressure, okay? And the important thing to know is because we only have four cylinders, uh, all four cylinders need to be within 5% of each other. We have 120, 120, and all of a sudden we have 110. You know, it's still not too bad, but it's, it's a little low. That's the cylinder that we're gonna look into, okay? So that's what this test is gonna do. So I'm just gonna screw it in where I remove the spark plug, okay? And I'm gonna crank it over five times so you, you can watch that gauge. Okay, so watch this gauge, it's gonna kinda bump up five times and then we check it. Okay, there you go. So we're at what, about 100, okay? It's probably a little bit low, all right? But uh, let's see what the other ones tell us. All right, so that one there is at 100 PSI. And uh, normally we would write these out, okay, but it's only four cylinders, so I'll be able to remember. And if something sticks out, trust me, you'll see it. Two, three, four. Whoa, did you see that drop? This one's at about 75. Let's just do that one again. Okay, it's at about, what, 90? Yeah, it's at about 90, okay? So the first one was at 100, this one's at 90. Let's see what the uh, next one's at, number three. So if, if they're all at about 100, that means 5% uh, would be 95. It's a little bit low, but you know what? It's been sitting around for a while, and after we run it, we could do a, another compression test, all right? And sometimes there's a little bit of carbon in there on the valves. Uh, you're not able to build enough compression. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, we need to get oil into the, uh, the cylinders as well so it seals better. This is just a quick check just to make sure that there's nothing way off, right? That's all we're doing. Uh, we'll do another compression check after we run it. We change the oil and things like that. We put clean fuel in it. So let's try it one more time. This is uh, cylinder number three. Okay. Look at cylinder number three. That's 150 PSI. Okay. So there's quite a difference between number one, two, and three. Okay. So that's a good compression. So I was thinking maybe about 120 or higher. But this one here is at 150, all right? That's really good. Now, if the first two are low, you know, sometimes the head gasket burns between cylinders, and that's probably why they're a little bit lower. So this is just initial checks, but at the end of the day, we'll be able to uh, have a whole image of what we need to do, the scope of work required. And we'll be able to tell our, uh, our friend, the farmer, whether he can use his machine or not. Okay, so this is the last cylinder, number four. 
Let's have a look at it. Let's see what we get. There you go, 150. Okay, so the first two are a little bit low. Number one was at 100, number two was at 90, uh, number three was at 150, and number four is at 150 as well. Okay, so those first two are a little bit concerning. Okay, but like I said, once we uh, change the oil and things like that and get it running, we'll do another compression test. Okay, so see how easy that was? When you, uh, when you have car problems and uh, you take it to your mechanic, that's, how, that's what they're looking for. They check your compression and you can actually get a, a good idea of the condition of the, the engine, okay? So we're gonna keep an eye out for those two cylinders and uh, the next step is going to be, we're gonna put the, the spark plugs back in, uh, put the distributor cap rotor back in. We're gonna check the oil, add fuel, Check the air filters, add coolant as well, and we'll see if it starts. Now we're gonna put our, um, our rotor back in place, our cap in place, distributor cap, and we're gonna put our spark plugs back in place as well, okay? And we're gonna put them all back, okay, in the, their same position, just like they're marked there, all right? That one we had 100, the next one we had 90, uh, number three, we had 150, and number four, we had 150, okay? So um, these two are a little concerning, right? And we mentioned that there could be a gasket in between that affects both of them, okay? That's why they're both a little low, so we have to monitor those two. Depending on what the customer wants, we may end up pulling the head off of it. So we'll see how that works, works out. So let's assemble this. Put it back on, got our rotor, okay, you saw how the rotor turned as well, and this is something we got to work with as well, you know, because when it's idling, it's not an issue, but when you're uh, working it under load, you know, pulling something, that's when you're really going to feel this issue here, okay, so that's something else that we have to get in into the uh, distributor itself, okay, so uh, this one here. Usually they have a notch or something. In this case, I believe it's right there. Okay. See that notch right there? That one goes right there. So you can't really go wrong with it. Make sure it seats properly and don't force it, okay? There's a little rubber uh, seal on the cap where it meets the distributor. So it just needs a little bit of snugging, snugging up. That's all. You know, you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to reef on it. This is our coil, the center one. It goes to our coil, ignition coil. And, you know, if you guys want to know more about this stuff, you know, ask us. Like, I mean, this is automotive stuff, but, um, you know, we, I do have some experience on it. And, uh, and, you know, once you understand one, you understand them all. So if you guys want to know more about automotive things like this, you know, how the distributor works or, the ignition coil or, or even, you know, the starter, things like that, or alternators, just let us know. We can explain this stuff as well. Not a problem. Okay, so put our number one in place. Okay, uh, one thing I mentioned, we were going to check the gap. Now, I wasn't expecting to come here. Remember, I was, this, is a, this was a surprise for me. So I wasn't expecting to uh, come in here and uh, work on a Massey Ferguson tractor that has a gasoline engine, right? So uh, it caught me by surprise and I didn't bring my uh, feeler blades for my spark plug gapper, but I'll check them another way. Now, usually they're what, 30, now in the older days, they weren't as, as the gap wasn't as big as, it, as they are nowadays, but um, I believe, what are, what are we looking at? Like 34, 35, okay. Now, all I'm doing here is just making sure that they're all at the same gap. Now, this one here, it, it seems a little bit small based on experience, of course. All right, so I'm going to open it a little bit just so I can get the tip inside of there like that. I don't know if you can see that. 
okay? And I'm going to make sure that they all have the th that same gap, okay? That's the idea. I don't want one that's too far open, one too closed, right? We want all these clearances to be the same. Uh, if you don't have specifications, like, a, you know, this one here looks pretty small. Like, I don't know if you can see it. So we need to open it up a little bit. Okay, and that's the idea is to make them all the same way. And there you go. See that? The tip of the screwdriver goes right in there between the electrode and the, the outer electrode and the inner electrode. So it's just like that. This one was too closed, okay? The gap was too close. So is this one, I can see it right there, okay? You, you can't fit your screwdriver in there. So I'm gonna open it a little bit, okay? And here, I'm gonna open this one a little bit more than we should, okay? And you see my screwdriver now goes further in. It goes actually past that center electrode. I don't know if you can see that. So it's, the gap is too wide on this one. So the way you close them up is you just tap them, okay? Just tap them on nice heavy metal, okay? Okay, it's still too big and I can, okay, look at that. Okay, it's, it's not, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's pretty similar to the previous ones, okay? That's the idea. This one here, yeah, it looks pretty close as well, okay? Now, if your gap is too close, uh, when you get your air and fuel mixture in here, air and fuel won't, you know, you won't get the right amount of uh, gap in there. So that spark will jump from the center electrode to the, I guess you wanna see that too, right? So I'll probably show you what, uh, what it looks like. So you can see how that gap jumps across. Okay, this one here, a little bit too much. There we go, that's about right. Okay, so we're gonna put our spark plugs in place. I'm gonna leave number four, I'm gonna leave number one out. Okay, we'll start with number two because number one we're gonna use to show you the, how that spark works. All right, so let's put number two in place. Okay, and you gotta try not to get dirt into the cylinder, right? There's always, uh, there's always something interesting about being in a barn, you know? So I don't know if you, uh, if you got a, a look at the rest of the barn here, but it gives you a little bit, it's a little creepy too, right? At the same time, but it's a very interesting place. You see the work that's here, you see the woodwork, the metal, you know, just the way it's laid out, the doors themselves. We set our firing order, it's written right here, okay? And a lot of gasoline engines, they have the firing order either in the intake manifold or they're written on the side of the, the main block. We said this is number one. The next one is three, which is this one. Uh, the next one is four and two, which is that one. Just like that, okay? Remember, if the rotor inside turns counterclockwise. So there's number one. And I promised you I would show you how the spark works. So if I can get uh, somebody from our media team to hold this, okay, maybe it'll, uh... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just joking, guys. Um, they didn't find it too funny. But the thing is, if they were to hold this, they'd actually get the shock of their lives. So um, it's always good to get shocked every once in a while. Uh, everyone should do it, you know, at least once in a lifetime. Let me just hook up my battery again, get my uh, jumper cables, and we'll... Uh, We'll check our uh, gap, or our, our spark jumping across the gap. What I'm looking for here is that gap right in there, okay? I need to make sure that that gap is there. Okay, so we're gonna try and start it. Let's see what happens. To get affordable and high quality replacement parts, visit FordisHD.com. Thanks for all the support so far, especially on this service call series. We love hearing feedback from the community, and if there's anything you'd like to see, be sure to let us know in the comments.